But we start with Joe Biden himself. Now, before the president and vice president departed on separate planes for an event in North Carolina, well, Joe did try to offer some brief remarks on the tragic bridge collapse that took place in Baltimore. Here is the sad and pathetic part. As per usual, Biden made it all about himself, and yet another tall tale about his own personal connection to that bridge, which didn't exist. We'll tell you in a minute. At about 1.30, container ship struck the Francis Scott Key Bridge, which I've been over many, many times commuting from the state of Delaware to our trainer by car. I've been in Baltimore Harbor many times. All right, big problem. You see, there's no railroad on the Francis Scott Key Bridge, and there would be no reason for Joe Biden to cross it on his way to D.C. But like every other national tragedy, whatever, whatever this issue is, Joe Biden always seems to find a way to make it all about himself. Remember, he did this with Afghanistan after the horrific withdrawal, lying about his own son dying in Iraq. It never happened. He did something similar after the devastating wildfires, if you recall, in Hawaii, embellishing what was a tiny little house fire in Delaware. Uh, why? To one-up the suffering, the disaster that uh, was happening to people in Maui? He nearly lost his precious Corvette. Oh, geez, the vapors, the horrors. And he did the same thing in Florida, if you recall, after a hurricane. He also frequently lies about his struggles during the civil rights movement. He lied about getting arrested, protesting apartheid in South Africa. He lied about his time as middle-class Joe on Amtrak. And according to Joe Biden, no one knows the struggle and sacrifice like Joe Biden. Take a look. Sunday, Sunday, lightning struck at home on a little lake that's outside of our home, not a lake, a big pond, and hit a wire and came up underneath our home into the heating ducts, the air conditioning duct. To make a long story short, I almost lost my wife, my 67 Corvette, and my cat. I know from experience how much, how much anxiety and fear and concern there are in the people. We didn't lose our whole home, but lightning struck, and we lost an awful lot of it about 15 years ago. When Joe Biden, our elected president entered the room. When he approached me, his words to me were, my, my wife Jill and I know how you feel. We lost our son as well and brought him home in a flag-draped coffin. My heart started beating faster and I started shaking knowing that their son died from cancer and they were able to be by his side. In reality, the guy who kept looking down at his watch during the dignified transfer of the U.S. service members killed in Afghanistan because of his botched uh, withdrawal and denied the existence of his own four-year-old granddaughter until it hurt him politically in the polls, uh, he doesn't seem to really understand something called empathy. And today, Joe and Kamala, well, they took a quick trip to North Carolina. It went, well, I guess about as well as you can expect with both of them. Take a look. You decide. Pretty incredible. And so is Kamala. She's really incredible. I know it sounds hard to believe. None of you got to pray God you hadn't had to go through that. But companies have stopped covering, and, and that life was put in danger. Fourteen years ago this week, I stood by President Obama when he signed the Affordable Care Act into law. Obamacare. And as many of you uh, know, I thought it was a big deal. <laughs> Thank God my mom wasn't around. Folks, if America sends me a Congress that are Democrats, I promise you, Tom and I will restore Roe v. Wade as the law of the land again. I'm serious. This is what, if, if you didn't know anybody, I think I'm making this stuff up. We're the only country in the world it's come out of every crisis stronger than we went in. The only country in the world. There is nothing beyond our capacity when we act together. Not a single thing. This is the United States of America. 
not talking about the disaster at the border. He's not talking about the disaster about law and order and safety and security in towns and cities all across the country. He's not talking about the struggling economy, the 60 percent of our fellow Americans living paycheck to paycheck, many Americans putting their bare necessities uh, on their credit cards. That's the only way they can make it every month. And after struggling through that speech, Biden then seemed shocked and surprised that his vice president was even there. Biden's obvious cognitive decline is just one major problem that Democrats will be facing in November. In poll after poll, independent candidate Robert Kennedy Jr. is peeling off significant numbers of votes, most of them seemingly coming from Joe Biden. It makes sense that RFK Jr. is a traditional, liberal, progressive environmentalist, a once reliable Democratic voter who now denounces Biden's insane policies at the border and has some belief in civil liberties. He's also not suffering from steep cognitive decline. I guess that's a huge plus. RFK Jr. is definitely a left winger and loves, uh, you know, lover of taxes, regulations, all things Obama, Clinton, Biden, environmentalists. And that's a huge problem for the Biden campaign. They now set out, by the way, to go after Robert F. Kennedy Jr. They will smear, slander, besmirch, attack every second, every minute, every hour. They're not doing it against Trump. Now, today, Kennedy announced his running mate, a Northern California lawyer and entrepreneur who really does embody the American dream. Her name, Nicole Shanahan, grew up extremely poor in a single family household. Her father suffered from mental illness, and her mother, a Chinese immigrant, worked hard but struggled to make ends meet, once relying on welfare, didn't want her kids seeing if, when she was using food stamps in a store. She remembers her mother being ashamed of, of that issue and asking her and her brother to leave so they wouldn't see that. At the age of 38, Shanahan happens to be one of the wealthiest people in America. Nicole Shanahan, she has a life story that anyone could be proud of, but she is a lifelong liberal Democrat from San Francisco. Uh, she brags that she is a progressive, quote, through and through, and an environmentalist. Again, a huge problem for Biden and Harris. For example, take a look at Texas Democrats. They have long dreamed of turning the Lone Star State blue for many years, even before Beto Bozo O'Rourke pranced onto the scene in 2020. Well, Trump won the state by about six points, but now, according to a new Marist poll, Trump is up by double digits, beating Biden in that state by 11 points. Now, when you throw Robert uh, Kennedy Jr. into the mix, Trump goes up by an even wider margin, with Kennedy peeling off 15 percent of the vote. And according to the Real Clear Politics average, take a look at this. In a three-way race between Trump and Biden and RFK Jr., Trump wins Wisconsin by three, Georgia by seven, Arizona by six, Nevada by six, Pennsylvania by two. That means Donald Trump will be elected the 47th president of the United States if that holds. North Carolina by nearly seven and Michigan by almost three points. It is very early. We are 223 days away and anything can happen. And tonight, Trump isn't just uh, faced with intense, uh, an intense political campaign. As we have been talking about, we have a weaponized Justice Department. He is now forced to combat that Department of Justice. And also, you have going on in New York and other places, you have another left-wing judge, and Biden donor has imposed a gag order against Donald Trump ahead of Alvin Bragg's bizarre criminal case against the former president over documents that were allegedly mislabeled. Now Trump cannot even speak out in his own defense. He can't defend himself against political attacks stemming from the indictments. Uh, of course, these conveniently handed down in the middle of an election. Um, I thought we lived in the United States of America. I thought we celebrated freedom of speech. Is this still America? Because I'm beginning to wonder. Far left courts in this country are out of control. They're doing this more and more, silencing people and threatening people to say that they'll send them to jail if they dare speak out in their own defense. Message is very clear. If the powerful government, their bureaucrats in New York City, Washington, D.C., Fulton County, Georgia, they don't like your politics, they don't like your last name, they're going to try and put you in jail. They want to take away your property. They want to silence your dissent and ruin your life forever. Is that the country you want to live in? 
If Democrats are successful in 223 days in November, this chilling system of justice, that will be coming to a town near you. If they can do this to Trump, they can do it to anybody. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.